In the following example, we're asked to solve the equation uh, by using the zero factor property. So notice that in both examples, we have some trinomials that we're probably going to have to factor, and then we're going to set the factors equal to zero. So that's the process involved here. In the first one, we have x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals zero. So I'm going to write out, well, I have negative 15. I need the factors of negative 15, okay, such that when added, I get positive 2. Well, I have 1 and 15 and 3 and 5. Well, 3 and 5 are the only combination that will somehow give me positive 2. Well, when I think about this, a positive times a negative or negative times a positive are the only ways that I can get a negative number when multiplying. So my signs would have to be, in this case, negative 3 and positive 5 because that's the only way that I can get a difference of positive 2. So my factors in this case are going to be x minus 3 and x plus 5 and I'm going to set those factors equal to 0. Now if I'm multiplying these two and they equal 0 then either one or the other is 0. So x minus 3 equals 0 and x plus 5 equals 0. Well, if x minus 3 equals 0, then obviously x will equal 3. And if x plus 5 equals 0, then x should equal negative 5. Now, it's pretty simple. In the first case, you add 3 to both sides. In the second case, you subtract 5 from both sides. And that's how we get our answer for this problem. There's actually two answers. Now, when we look at the second one, let me go ahead and divide my page here. And I'll pick a different color. <clears throat> when I look at the second one, I'm going to use the box method of factoring because it, notice the difference. Well, in this case, I have 7x squared plus 4x minus 3. In the first example, I could use the shortcut method uh, because of the fact that my coefficient for the x squared term was 1. But in this case, I have a coefficient of 7 for the x squared term. So I'm going to use the box method of factoring. So here's my box. In the first term, in the first box, rather, I write the first term, 7x squared. In the la last box, I'll write the last term, in this case, negative 3. Now I multiply 7 times negative 3, okay, because that's the first step in this process, and I get negative 21. So here is negative 21. So I want the factors of negative 21 such that when added, somehow give me a combination of 4, positive 4. Well, let's think about this. 1 and 21, 3 and 7. 3 and 7 are the only combination that will somehow give me um, 4. So let's see here. What can I do? Well, to get a negative 21, it would have to be positive times negative or negative times positive. So positive times negative or negative times positive. Okay, so let's think about this. To get positive 4 as a difference when I subtract, I would have to have what? Well, I would have to have negative 3 and positive 7. That is the only way that I can get positive 4 as a difference. So I'm going to write minus 3x here and plus 7x here. Okay, good. Now what I need to do is looking only at the top row, factor out the greatest common factor. So looking at this top row right here, my GCF in both cases, the greatest common factor happens to be x. So I write x here. Now looking at the bottom row, so just these two factors here, these two terms rather, well, it looks like they have nothing in common. But the trick is, when it looks like they have nothing in common, they always have 1. Now it's going to be plus 1 because this box right here happens to be positive. So I will write plus 1. Now, I will look at the first column. So looking just here, what is it that they have in common? I see a 7, I see an x. I see a 7, I see an x. Well, they must have 7x in common. Okay. Now let's look at the next column. Okay. Negative 3x, negative 3. Well, they both have a negative 3, right? So they must have a 3 in common. And in this case, it will be negative 3 because... This box right here is negative. Okay. 
So, I have two factors, and I'm going to set each of them equal to 0. So, this right here, and this right here. 7x minus 3 equals 0. I add 3 to both sides. I have 7x equals 3. Divide both sides by 7. I get x equal to 3 sevenths. There's my first answer. The second answer here, well, is pretty straightforward. If x plus 1 equals 0, then x must equal negative 1. So that is my second answer here. So notice that we have two answers um, for this question right here. So this is how you would solve an equation using the zero factor property.